one. Hey everyone, it's Gordon Einstein. We are back in lovely Dubai on the rooftop of the Trip Hotel, and we're conducting our ongoing series of flash interviews with famous and awesome people. <laughs> For example, so thank you, Baba. Braca, I'm going, I, you know, third time I'll get that right. I'm sorry, it's just my issue. Okay. Pleasure to have you here. You know, you're nice to do, do an actual in-person meeting as opposed to yeah. Zoom from a thousand miles away. Uh -huh. It's amazing the things you can actually do in Dubai. You can actually meet with people. It's kind of fun. Um, so appreciate you making the time. We're going to do a flash interview, a 20 minute, 20 minute sort of brief intro. Uh -huh. um, you know, I always like to say, just like the Wolverine, the Marvel. You know, the Wolverine has the origin story. We can do your, your origin story. Um, you can tell us a little bit about you, the background. I know you're a famous international attorney, but you'll fill that in a little bit um, from one of my favorite countries. And then we'll get into some projects you're working on or you're interested in and thoughts on crypto life and whatever makes you happy. So I am going to interrupt a lot, okay. you know, um, but go ahead, tell us about you and I'll look at you, you look at the camera and then we'll figure it out. So, um... I'm here from uh, Latvia, uh, Liga, and um, yes, I have my uh, experience to being a lawyer, and mostly I so saw my my field uh, of the law I'm practicing is uh, private law, international and private business transactions, and um, so yes, I have almost like close to 30 years of my experience to practicing uh, law. Uh, I have and, also and as I already joked, that means that she started when she was five years old. <laughs> so all of you who feel like you're doing well in your life, just try to compare with that. No, I'm pretty close. It's um, close to some but, um, but anyway, so uh, yes, um, uh, I started practicing law quite early uh, since uh, uh, when I was age 21, I finished university, I got my law degree, and this was a very interesting, challenging time for my country because we were uh, building up new country, new legal system after um, after a regaining our independence, and so with a very clear target and goal to join the European Union, and that's why for new generation lawyers, uh, we had so many opportunities to make our careers either in politics or in business or in, uh, academic life. So, mm -hmm. and um, I was uh, quite good graduate, and I was invited immediately after finishing university to also start teaching, and I became teaching assistant for the contract law, tort law. Uh, later, I was teaching consumer law and legal writing and analysis. So, uh, so and the sports law. Things yeah, I'm yeah, let me ask you a question. After the USSR fell apart, or was there any part of it after, that was after? Yes, I entered university already in 1993, which is three years after the collapse of the Soviet Union. So, yeah, but, but, but not much after. Not much after. Yeah. So, yeah. was there still? It sounds like there was still residual Soviet law, uh, or at least processes or mentalities or something. A mentality of mm -hmm. uh, Again, so Latvia has always been in a very unique situation like, like uh, other like three Baltic countries as well, because that we've been lucky that we had a lot of assistance from our uh, uh, Latvian community, which emigrated to the United States, to other uh, uh, European countries, and you know, other uh, this uh, this diaspora of Latvians after the regaining independence, they became so active that they would come over, and of course, they had like experts in different fields of medicine and law and, and and economics, and those people were really happy to come over and to help, and we also had lots of. Uh, uh, this financial support and assistance from the United States of America, and I, I also used the possibility to get funds. And I went for my uh, within my master's studies. I went to America, to Portland, Oregon, oh. so I had a chance to study. And uh, and this is very uh, how to say it was a very precise program how to uh, give opportunity and uh, for young. Uh, talented uh, lawyers, business people, whatever, to go and to learn. Mm -hmm. So and I had this wonderful chance to go to the United States of America. I was in Portland, Oregon. I had some possibility to study in uh, New Orleans and in Louisiana, which oh, is fun. very, very, yeah. it's the most cool. The the is, were, you, were you able to study in New Orleans or was it too much fun? No, it was so-so. You, you managed to combine everything. 
okay. but, uh, but I was really, uh, I was impressed about the culture and, and the life itself, uh, but uh, I managed to study as well. So I think that's a, that's a great opportunity also because after uh, my, my studies in America, I went back to Latvia and my university faculty of law, I, I established two new study courses, which was consumer protection, especially consumer credit. And since that actually, I was very much involved in all the like uh, consumer and bank relationships. And, and, and then you start doing, you know, uh, I, I started to- So make sure, make sure I heard that correctly. You innovated two areas that sound like they're related. There's consumer protection, yes. and then there's sort of consumer banking relationships. Yes, yeah. Okay, makes, makes sense, sure. And, and the other was a little bit like a general theory of law, which is legal argumentation, reasoning, legal writing. And I found that uh, in the United States, this class, I found it so useful. So because the, in the Europe back, we have more like academic approach when you study some kind of like profession. So, and this practical side is little bit staying behind. And so originally you have, but when you finish the university, you have your diploma, but next day, if you go to the wild market and you've been asked to draft a maybe simple sales contract, you would not be able, you know the theory, but you maybe do not know the structure. Okay, today it's different. Today we have full internet samples, you can dig inside and you yeah. can do it. But back then, you know, it was not so easy. And, and that's why I found it very interesting that in parallel while you are teaching, uh, learning theory, you can also practice, you know, uh, in drafting this different kind of documents. So, <laughs> when I went to law school, one of my favorite classes yeah. in retrospect, was law, language, and ethics, yeah. which is yeah. neat. It was, you know, we, everyone was like, why am I taking this class? It's not necessarily practical in any one thing, but it was just so generally useful because it lets you actively use your mind to interpret. Yes. Interpret, to argument, Every situation, like being a lawyer, when you have to represent your clients, so you have heard so many information. So how to find the right strategy to select that that's really relevant for a particular case, you know. That, and I think this is really, it's like many other things, it needs to be trained. So you need training for that, you know, so. And yeah, so, and um, yeah, uh, so parallel to my... Oh, were you able to be mentored in law? With, if the law was being rewritten as you were learning this, like who, yeah. who, besides for your professors, did you get a chance to, was there a mentorship relationship in there or how did you manage? Yes, yes, it was a mentorship relationship as well. So, uh, this is a, a typical situation for uh, maybe a, 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 for Latvia and also for other like uh, or neighboring countries that it was allowed to be, uh, to teach a lot, to be academic and at the same time practice law. Mm -hmm. Because the other country, there are restrictions either your factory, you have your like law office and you practice law, mm -hmm. or you are teaching, and it's not always you know allowed to combine. But for us, I think it's good because the country is not so big. We try to use our brightest and you know minds in uh, in the best possible way, and, and I think that also that was good for me to being um, to teach. Uh, to teach law, it always requires you to be all the time prepared. You have to learn everything. You you read every new uh, things which are happening in your country or neighboring countries or whatever. So and students request you to be on the top all the time with the questions and everything. And it really helps when you go back to your practice as well. So and when you come to students, it's always interesting what you are telling. Not only theory, but you can bring some samples, some some real stories from the practice. Which you know, so, yeah. and I think that uh, these both sides of me gains that being a uh, practicing law and also teaching it really gave me a lot of stuff and benefits. And uh, um, yeah, and in parallel, so um, I became like an expert for uh, our parliament when they drafted uh, commercial law. So, uh, 2006, I became deputy minister of justice, and so it was a time when we were drafting new commercial code for Latvia, and so and that was the time when I first uh, went to UNIDOIR in Rome, Italy, which is the International Institute for uh, Unification of Private Law. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Union. Hmm. So there was a solid, well, there's a solid decade between the period you started and when that happened, but yeah. I imagine you're acquiring community law before then. Yeah. So to what extent 
To what extent were you simply copying community law? Now we got birds. <laughs> No, actually, so, but, but, uh, but the interesting thing was Latvia was independent from 1819 uh, to 1939. So in that period, actually, Latvia was quite well uh, developed country. They had our civil code. They yeah. had uh, our so based basic laws. And so what we did, especially with private law, so after gaining independence, we um, renewed all of uh, existing civil code from 1937. Okay. Yes, and then of course today already we added. It's still the law is in force. So if we talk about contract law, so we have a law from 1937. So and lot of amendments have been done because of the requirements of European Union, because the new institutions are coming. So and uh, and of course, but this is the and I got to point out for audience, this baller app has a birds soundtrack. So yeah. if you're hearing like some squeaking birds. Uh, it's, it's not us. So we're, we're gonna actually lean in just a little bit, just to make sure we get the audio clear. Yeah. You know, with our little bird sound effects, see if you can hear. Uh -huh. There's not birds and they're flying around. It's there's no birds in Dubai actually. No, just kidding. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's okay. yeah that's awesome. So but, go ahead. Uh, so, so there, there was pre-existing law from the 30s. Yeah. And then you become independent and you almost grandfathered that law in. Yeah. And then and then it sounds like you went through a unification process with the EU in general. Yeah. And then uh, we missed uh, in from 1930s, we missed commercial laws. So commercial law was drafted from the beginning, very modern. So and and again, our neighbor neighbor countries like Estonia and Lithuania, they decided they decided also to draft new civil codes. That's why they may be and sometimes that will be a little bit more fashionable, but today we still have, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but, um, yeah. Well, and, let me ask you: to, to what extent did Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia coordinate their efforts, or did uh, you, a lot? Uh, okay. Yeah, so we are really there. It's so small, uh, three Baltic countries with a common history, with common pain, and with common vision of the future. What we see, you know, being uh, strongly believing that being the European Union, uh, within the European Union, is the right choice. So, but we do cooperate, and and so it's my great grandmother's from Lithuania, so yeah, so yeah. we're on the same team. And we have brothers and sisters. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah, and so and of course, logically, it's like two and a half hours to drive with a car either to Tallinn or to Vilnius for a dinner. So. so so that's why we, we are very close, whatever we do, yeah. yeah. So just, the, again, this is the flash interview format. We'll do a longer one later, but how, why are you in Dubai? Uh, yes, um, also practicing law. So since the field is international business, so we are we have our clients, and one of the uh, strategic partners we're working with uh, together is the uh, Liechtenstein-based company Griffin uh, Group, which uh, which main business is incorporation of trust, judiciary services, and uh, management of trust, and uh, also nowadays uh, trust and the idea where to invest money, and 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 so. Uh, startups so became like uh, absolutely a logic one of the options when you look at how to work to invest what, what kind of businesses to support and so we ended up also uh, just serving our clients that uh, we need different startups some of them are in uh, this decentralized finance they 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 hear that talk DeFi yeah DeFi so and yeah. It's happening. That, like there's uh, actually clients who are paying lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> R reminder to my clients, they pay I, their lawyers. I always say, yeah. because when the first time it was 2014, when I was asked to do something in you know, bitcoins and to understand what does it really mean. And for me, it took a quite long time to just to dig in and understand. But our law office, um, I'm partnering with the, in Latvia back in BDO Law. So actually, it was the first law office in Latvia which gets uh, paid for services and bitcoins. That's fine. Yeah. So That's and uh, I hope you held on to some of them. Yeah, yeah. And and so it was in that time it was something because our financial uh, supervisory authority warned uh, everybody not to fall in this trap because you know you have to be very careful and uh, you know what is uh, any kind of business is marketing what relates to crypto assets. So, and and, and it's very different how each country reflects to this. Some of them banning, some of them you know having this hand off attitude or wait and see what will happen. So, in different, but I always think that this decentralized finance is sometimes the logic consequence 
the reaction of the society in general to this conventional financial system. Yeah. It's like these lawyers are saying, you know, why back to like 30 years ago, the alternative dispute resolution was yeah. introduced, mediation, because people just get a little bit disappointed with us lawyers, that we are too smart, we are too slow, we are too expensive, and so, you know, and that's why society, they want not to solve these, you know, yeah. disputes, but... Oh, yeah, I here's something personal. The, the, I had stopped practicing law and had a uh, technology company. And the reason I got back into law was because of crypto and blockchain, because I saw that not only does crypto need law, but law needs crypto. In other yeah. words, to make law better, law needs to improve because yeah. we've been doing the same thing yeah. for hundreds of years and done with it. You know, it's not yeah. it's not an attractive way of operating yeah. life. That's what I'm saying, you know, and, 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 Whatever, but we lawyers are smart. We found a way also to be an alternative disposition. But many of the we're yeah, we're tricky. Many lawyers are good mediators, and so be fun. And the same also on the time. Unfortunately, I'm gonna, we're coming up on the time, but we're going to do more. We're, we're going to do more follow-ups. But you're you're based in Dubai now. Or you're... Now I'm based in Dubai. Company here in Dubai, so mainly also yeah financial tax uh, tax issues and also decentralized finance. Mm -hmm. Mainly documents which relate to terms of reference, AML compliance, consumer protection. What you need to know when you're marketing these products. So this is already based on experience with some of the clients. What to be a little bit, I have to say also yes, learning by doing. You know, that's what we are doing. And I'm also that's the only way to learn sometimes. Yes, and I'm also a member of the Unit Raw Governing Council, which I mentioned already is this international institute for the education of private law. And this year we had uh, we, we so that, that's a it's something it is global scope, it's more than one hundred and thirty-nine countries. So it was actually the institute was established immediately in, in Italy, in Rome, immediately after the second world war with the idea to unify business law to make business one easier uh, in international transactions. So and it's, yes, we're coming back. So Unit Raw had a target right now within this year to draft new guidance documents called digital assets in private law. So get me involved in that because that's exactly what I do. Yeah. So okay, see, I'm I, I'm using this as a network opportunity. So we're, we're going to pause just because of time. Yeah. I want to, and we're going to. I think you need to have a follow-up panel on this beautiful idea of unifying yeah. law because I, I think when things go on the blockchain, given that blockchain is inherently global, that's a big push for unifying law. So we'll get your contact information and your background, we'll add it to the show notes. Um, if anyone would like, you know, this, obviously she's great and very knowledgeable, so Iva, I'm saying this correctly, you know, we're gonna put uh, your contact information in the show notes, do, do a follow-up panel, but let everyone reach you. And you are, you know, you're a valuable local Dubai resource in addition to having international scope. Sounds like to me. So. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah, it. And I'm posting this online right now. Here we go.